Welcome to the Wing Chun Kids channel, where martial arts is the way of life. Today we're going to talk about Wing Chun versus Tai Chi. A lot of the subscribers here are asking, what's the difference between these two martial arts? I've had training in both of them for several years, each of them, and I have some basic understanding of how they work. Now, the more you understand about the principles and theories and philosophies of these martial arts, the more you'll become a better fighter and the more you understand and deepen your knowledge about martial arts and your own skills in training. So here we go. The first major difference between Wing Chun and Tai Chi is the shape, the geometric shape. Martial arts is basically physics. A lot of people explain it that way. Wing Chun, the shape is a triangle. Now you've seen this in a lot of training in Wing Chun. They have this triangle. That's why the wooden dummy is a triangle. The arms are a triangle. And a lot of the form form this triangle. From the top view, the triangle is like this, like this. Okay? When you're doing your chi sao, it's in a triangle. Okay? So the basic structure of the arms in Wing Chun is a triangle. It goes into the center in a wedge format. Now you make that a 3D shape, it becomes a cone. If you make a triangle and you spin it 360 degrees, it becomes a cone. So the shape of Wing Chun is a triangle, or you make it 3D, it's a cone. What is Tai Chi? Tai Chi is a circle. That's why you see a lot of round movements in Tai Chi. It's based on circular movement, because Tai Chi is not focused on one point. They attack the whole picture. Now, what, what happens when you turn a circle into a 3D image? It becomes a sphere. How do you, I don't know how to draw a sphere on the board, but it's a sphere, right? Okay, it's a sphere. It's a 3D image. So that's the first difference. Is Wing Chun will focus on one point, attacking in one center point, where Tai Chi will be attacking on a um, 360, even behind you, from the side, up and down. All right, so if you do a 3D image, Tai Chi would be a circle and Wing Chun would be a cone. The second major difference is the strategy of each of the forms here. Wing Chun's strategy is to dominate the center line. So that's why they have a triangle structure, is they want to attack the middle and dominate the center line of the person and attack the person uh, in the center line. So anywhere from the nose down to the groin. All right, so that's their strategy. It's the center. So most of the techniques are centered around um, either moving the person to move and dominate the center or to get around things to get into the center and overwhelm the person from the center. Tai Chi is not always concerned with attacking the center. Tai Chi is more concerned with attacking the person's balance. So instead of overwhelming the attacker with force, Tai Chi would use the person's balance against their, themselves, right? So Tai Chi's strategy is attacking a person's balance. The third major characteristic difference Wing Chun and Tai Chi is how they deal with force. What do they do with incoming force? Well, what Wing Chun would do is, once again, use a triangle to fortify the center. But how do you fortify the center? They do that by moving around the obstructions to get back into the center. So that if there's an incoming force, they will move around it and then go back into the center. Right? So either they move it out of the way, like a pa, da, if a force is coming, they'll move it out of the way, pak da, or they will get around it with a lap or rolling back fist, they'll go around it to go back into the center. So basically what Wing Chun does is they will um, basically move around the incoming force to go back and attack the center. Now what Tai Chi does is it dissolves the force. So what happens is when the attack is coming, they will suck it in and then dissolve the energy. It's like um, 
It's like octopus, right? If you try to punch an octopus, it'll just grab your arms and just suck you in. All right, so that's what Tai Chi does. It actually dissolves the force. Okay, you see how it's coming together. You use a triangle to fortify center and use a triangle to move around to get back into the center. With Tai Chi, you use a circle and you, to attack the person's balance and then use a circle to up, absorb and dissolve. It's like a big bubble, like a big, uh, big sponge, absorbing the energy and dissolving the energy so that the person's energy is gone and is given to you, which you could use to bounce back to them or to use it against them and take their balance. Another strategy uh, for Wing Chun and Tai Chi is how they do trapping. Now, what is trapping? Trapping is basically being able to um, disable somebody's arms or legs, most of the time it's arms, uh, and be able to hit them while they can't hit you because you've trapped them and you trap their hands. Now, with Wing Chun, the uh, primary trapping is they're gonna trap Trap the hands or trap the arms. So that's the strategy. So you go like this, you trap the hand, you trap both hands with all this Wing Chun movement. Now you trap both hands with one hand and you got one hand free to attack the person. That's what Wing Chun mostly does. Now what Tai Chi does is it traps energy. So they're not concerned too much with trapping the hands, but they're more concerned with trapping the person's energy. Hence the dissolving and the circle. What they do is they absorb the, the force that the person gives to you. So now the force is all dissolved and sucked in. Now the force is now trapped in the ball. Okay? So instead of going forward and trapping the person's hands so that they can't move, you're absorbing the energy so that it traps the person's energy. So the guy's off balance like this and your energy is trapped because you're off balance. You have no force when you're off balance. You cannot attack and generate any force when you don't have balance, okay? So what Tai Chi would do is trap energy or force, not necessarily arms. It could be using the person's uh, spine or legs or ankles, any part of the body. Is the trap is the trap that energy, okay? Another strategy for fighting in Wing Chun that's different from Tai Chi is um, how they train their sensitivity. Now, Wing Chun sensitivity drills like in Chi Sao that you learn when you start um, learning how to do sticky hands is learning to how to have sensitivity in your forearms in this area of your body so that when you can feel that there's an empty space you attack if you feel that there's an energy coming you'll be directed with the bong cell or if you feel energy going downwards you defend it down with the tan cell so all the sensitivity is in this area of the body and which is very good if especially in your close range and you want to fight very quickly because your tactile sensitivity which means your touch responds a lot faster than your eyes with your eyes you have to see the target, then your eye sends a signal to your brain, then the brain sends a signal to your hand to tell it to do something. With tactile sensitivity, which means touch in Wing Chun, your, your hand will tell your brain exactly what's happening and go back to your hand. So your eye doesn't have to interpret what's happening. Actually, uh, it is proven scientifically to be at least two to three times faster than reacting with your eyes, is reacting with touch. So that's why Wing Chun uses this Qi Sao to develop sensitivity in your form so that you feel the energy and find those openings uh, and redirect the energy with the triangle. Okay, so the sensitivity is in the forearms and the hands, mainly the forearms. Tai Chi sensitivity is throughout the whole body. Obviously, it's a lot harder to develop sensitivity in your whole body than the forearms. That's why, in my opinion, Tai Chi is a much deeper art than Wing Chun. Um, Wing Chun is much easier to learn and is very useful, but 
if you want to master your Tai Chi, it may take you a lot longer because you have developed sensitivity, not just your forearms, because they do have sensitivity drills for the arms in Tai Chi, but then they also have drills for the entire body, even your back, which Wen Kin Chin doesn't have. So with Tai Chi, with sensitivity to your whole body, you can feel energy from any point and be able to redirect and attack with any part of your body, not just your arms. That's where I think Tai Chi is superior if you can train it to that level. Okay, next one is another strategy in uh, Wing Chun, which is forward pressure. Forward pressure. A lot of Wing Chun strategy is to put forward pressure on the opponent so that you can apply this triangle and force your opponent to make a mistake or to redirect you so that you can move around the target, trap his arms, use the sensitivity, and attack the center line. Remember, back to the center line. It all connects. What Tai Chi does is it uses 360 degree movement and attack. So instead of always going forward, Tai Chi um, is actually doesn't move. The theory of Tai Chi is like you're a tree. If you pull a tree branch, what happens? It just whips back, right? If you push the tree branch, it just whips back again. Is the tree doing anything? No, it's just standing there. That's what Tai Chi is. Tai Chi is training yourself to be like a tree. If energy comes, you whip it back, send it back, either a push or a pull, okay? So Tai Chi is 360 degree, 60 degrees instead of just forward. Can Tai Chi go forward? Sure. Can Tai Chi go backward? Yes. It can go up or down or any, anywhere, 360 degrees. Wing Chun, most of their techniques are forward. I'm not saying that it doesn't go backward or it goes sideways. Yes, they are. But most of the techniques work best when they go forward, okay? Whereas Tai Chi, um, energy is not forward, okay? It is 360. It's waiting for energy to come so that it can trap the energy using sensitivity of the body and dissolving the energy to take the person's balance. So it's all connected, all right? Next, the final strategy of each of the martial arts, Wing Chun and Tai Chi, is the distance. Wing Chun is a close range art close range. That's why we have a triangle like this. You see, the triangle is not that big. It's only the width of your forearm. So your attacker has to be about this distance or away from you for you to use this triangle. Like this. Mostly close range. Most of the time. And most of the trapping, okay, and the center line, dominating center line, happens when you're in close range. And that's where the wing chin really shines is in that close range because you're using this tactile sensitivity of your forearms to be able to do all these fast things when you're too close for the other person to react. That's what Wing Chun is for. That's why they use close range. Tai Chi can be long or short range. There is no, um, there is no close range or long range for Tai Chi. It can be both. So all ranges. There are techniques that you can Tai Chi, like the single whip, that are long range. There are Tai Chi that can be short. Okay, so in the Tai Chi forms, you see these big movements, like this. Very big movements. Why do they do such big movements? Well, they train it so that they can get their body to coordinate and the muscles to coordinate, so that when you do it fast and slow, the same body mechanics happen. A lot of times when you do really small movements, it's hard to train the muscles to work properly in the right order. That's why in Tai Chi, they have big movements. In the form, you see well, very big movements. But in reality, when it's used, it's actually very small. And that's how you can generate short range power with very little movement because you've used the long range movements so that you develop your muscles to work in coordination with your stru skeletal structure and your body. And then now when you do it slow, I mean, when you do it fast and do it small, then it adds a lot more power to that movement. So these are the seven tactics and seven strategies for Wing Chun and Tai Chi. Some are better than others, depends on your situation. So which one is better? That's really up to you. How much time do you have to train? 
Can you train Wing Chun? Can you train Tai Chi at the same time? Of course you can. How long does it take to master each one? Depends how much time you have. Can you train three hours a day to master Tai Chi? Can you train three hours a day to master, master Wing Chun? If you can do that, then great. Then you can do all these things. But now that you know the roadmap and the strategies for both, it help you understand what you're doing when you're training each of these martial arts and help you become a better fighter. Hey, let us recap what we just learned today. So Wing Chun strategy is shaped like a triangle and a cone to attack the center. It will move around the targets so that, I mean, move around the person's arms or move the arms away so that you can fortify and strengthen the center line of your attack. While it's doing that, it will trap the arms using the sensitivity of your forearms so that you can attack and use forearm momentum in a close range. Those are the strategies of Wing Chun. In Tai Chi, the energy and the structure is a circle. It will use the circle to attack the person's balance using the uh, trapping the energy and dissolving the person's incoming force with using, by using your body and 360 degree movement and sensitivity um, in order to take the person's balance so that they cannot attack you and you can use your energy, their energy against them. It works in all ranges. So those are the main differences between Tai Chi and um, the strategies in fighting. And you may find these strategies and tactics in other styles too. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson. If you have any questions, make sure you make a comment and subscribe to this channel and we'll see you in the next lesson. Train hard and martial arts is the way of life.